Thank you all for returning to my Let's Learn Public Health series. I'm so glad to have you back. Today, our topic for discussion and dissection is threefold. We'll be tackling what a social determinant of health is, which I alluded to in my previous video, risk factors that can influence a person's health status, and commonplace topics and issues that both our communities and public health officials face. Without further ado, I'm excited to dive in, so let's get started. As a refresher, I would like to begin with a simple explanation of some key terms that will help us better comprehend some buzzwords used in the public health sphere. A determinant, as it relates to our purposes, is basically how something defines the origins and extrapolates the effects of something, how a choice is made. Uh, ergo, a social determinant is how the origin of a choice can be affected by social environments. If we combine the phrase with health, we get social determinant of health, a factor that contributes to the social expression of health in a given populace. A social determinant of health can range from socioeconomic status, race and ethnicity, gender expression and presentation, migrant status, etc. If a person of color is born into an environment that has historically been polluted by excess levels of lead within the paint used to paint their house and walls, then they are socially at a higher risk of developmental disabilities due to that determinant. Poverty is one of the biggest social determinants, especially among communities of color, natal, native tribal communities, and migrant communities like those immigrating to the United States from South and Central America. As they are not traditionally given insurance and are usually subjected to extreme weather and environmental conditions, as well as stressful conditions inside migrant detention centers, they are at risk for negligence and adverse health outcomes, like insomnia, anxiety, and increased risk for COVID-19 exposure due to cramped living quarters with less disease surveillance oversight. Given that we now know this information, we can conclude that those who are adversely affected by certain social determinants of health could have negative health outcomes although public health officials seek to mitigate these to the best of their ability and create positive health outcomes. Speaking of the COVID-19 virus, a big issue in public health has always been pandemics, epidemics, and endemic diseases. The difference between a pandemic and endemic disease is, whilst a pandemic is international, simultaneously occurring in multiple zones of above normal levels of infection at once, an endemic disease is a disease that has become, over time, native to a specific region and is continually popping up there at pre-recorded expected levels. To add, an epidemic is when a community, or communities, experience a rise in cases of a health-related event. And it does not have to be an infectious disease, it can be food poisoning, for example, over a certain period of time. Epidemiologists and biostatisticians are traditionally the people who have jurisdiction over controlling and recording these events and intervening on the behalf of communities to remedy these. They may use certain methods like quarantining, contracts, uh, contact tracing, sending out notices of contaminated items, recalling these items, and working with health departments to obtain samples of the pathogen or pathogens. Let's shift gears to talk about some ubiquitous ideas and topics that the public health field is constantly trying to tackle. Most of these are, as mentioned before, social determinants of health. Now, not every community, population, country, region, etc. will be exposed to these issues and have to deal with them on a daily basis or even in a lifetime. On the flip side, others like climate change are universal experiences for every member of mankind. Despite this dichotomy, I still would like to enumerate the list so we can get a big picture look at what exactly we're dealing with when it comes to taking a cursory glance at what our community health officials are dealing with. I hope you'll find this list helpful and please feel free to dive into the page provided in the description for more information on each topic. Please let me know if you'd like a separate video on any of the mentioned topics. Aging, Health, and Equity Chronic Diseases climate change, communicable diseases, 
community water fluoridation, COVID-19, Ebola, environmental health, global health, gun violence, health equity, health policies, health ranking, health reform, healthy community design, healthy housing, high school graduation, immigrant health and immigrant health care, injury and violence prevention, lead contamination, maternal and child health, mental health, preparedness, prescription drug overdose, public health accreditation, public health standards, racism and health and racism in health care, reproductive and sexual health, school-based health care, social determinants of health, substance misuse, suicide, tobacco, transportation, vaccines, and the Zika virus. Finally, I would like to outline what a risk factor is. A risk factor, by definition, is any action, thought, or behavior that inclines someone closer to making poor choices. For young people especially, risk factors can cause detrimental harm to their bodies and minds. It should be noted that children are targeted via advertising and media to engage in behaviors that may be innocuous on the surface, but beneath their veneer are very risky. For example, a well-documented one is weight loss commercials and products inducing young people to participate in diets and calorie and food restrictions that makes a fertile breeding ground for eating disorders. Other examples of youth-specific, though of course not exclusive, consequences of risky behavior include alcohol and drug dependence and abuse, antisocial behavior, youth violence, school failure, anxiety and depression, and teen pregnancy. Because this demographic is at a higher risk than others of these particular behaviors, health literacy is paramount and education plus harm reduction are key to keeping kids of all backgrounds healthy. Certain education has been tailored by health professionals to better serve their communities. Instead of telling students that the only way to safely have sex is to not have sex at all, which is abstinence, and by the way, which was pushed by the United States government to be predominantly taught in school health classes until 2017. This is something that I learned when I was in school. <laughs> Educators have now shifted their approach and have included the use of contraceptive pills, condoms, IUDs, etc., as well as the importance of regular STI testing to ensure teens participating in sex have other options to maintain good sexual health if they do wish to have sex. Before departing, I would like to draw your attention to a graphic I think highlights protective factors versus risk factors very well, and how our community health workers use these tactics to better serve our populations. Please take a look at it for more information and feel free to pause the video if necessary. Finally, in addition to my sources provided in the description, I would like to also draw your attention to another webpage that provides good information on how social development opportunities can increase the likelihood of positive health outcomes in our communities. It will also be posted for your convenience. Thank you so much for joining me today in learning more about social determinants of health, common issues in the public health community at large, and what risk factors are. I enjoyed spending this time with you and I will see you very soon in the next video. Until next time,